look at, um, you know, I hate to speculate, but vice presidential candidates, these are um, often areas where candidates will look to kind of complement their own skill sets, things that they might be lacking or perceived as lacking. You talked about Bernie Sanders, perhaps, as maybe someone who has left something open, uh, the door open there, but Bernard, you just don't think that's that that's necessarily likely. Yeah, Bernard, <laughs> Bernard, Bernard. Not that one. <laughs> Come on, Bernard. I do not, I mean, as much as I love Bernie, no. I, I mean, because? I, I love the name love Bernie. Bernie. Yeah. No, I love Bernard. the name Bernie. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> But uh, but Hillary and Bernie on the same ticket together? No, I think that's a non-story. Because because they run the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, Tweet that, I, I look. I, I think at the end of the day, they have a bit of a different vision about how to get things done for the American people, and I just don't see the complementary factor of Bernie Sanders in a, in a Hillary Clinton ticket. We need someone, frankly, with a bit of a different vision uh, that can provide some geographic balance, some, but it be of the same temperament. As Hillary Clinton, not someone that potentially could um, uh, be a little wild on the ticket. The last thing you want is someone sort of lone rangering uh, oh, on the ticket. On. You've never seen that There's before, Rick, have you? That. <laughs> You've never seen that before. Yeah, so, so who would be on that short list? I mean, you know, there are names that are circulated. Elizabeth Warren, we saw her on social media, on Twitter, taking on Donald Trump uh, in a very forceful way just a few days ago, right? Um, there's a, uh, yeah, there are some more names. Just, what do you think? You just throw whatever name you want out there right now. I don't think anybody's in any serious position to say there's a short list, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty much any Democrat who's not going to drag down the ticket, who may bring some sort of uh, gender or uh, ethnicity or geographic balance to the ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, you know the one the one thing that I was told early on that I think is is I've seen repeated in reporting since is they're going to want somebody who can take the fight to Donald Trump, right? So that's going to be, I think, a bigger deal than geography or any of these other boxes that you normally check. And so who's on that list? I mean, you know, I don't know who's on that list right now. There's mm -hmm. a list of 20 people you can right. come up with. But I think some of the names you could probably rule out. I think Bernie Sanders, I agree with <laughs> Bernard. I just don't see her picking somebody who's going to overshadow her. And I think picking somebody like Sanders, who really, you know, as a guy who has overperformed, I think, where anybody thought he would be at this point. And you're not going to put somebody like that on your ticket. She doesn't need to have somebody like Bernie Sanders. She can have somebody of a Bernie Sanders ilk, somebody who maybe represents the kinds of, uh, of ideas that Sanders uh, represents, but not necessarily the personality of Bernie Sanders. Yeah, you mentioned taking the fight to Donald Trump. Leslie, I'm wondering, so uh, if a general election matchup is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, uh, what would be, you think, the role then for the vice presidential candidates, traditionally obviously the attack dog position here, but in a case where Donald Trump him, himself has been so direct in carrying out his own attacks, mm -hmm. uh, could that change? Potentially. No. No. Um, no. I, I do think it, a great balance would be you have kind of the leadership style bravado that people have started to accept with Donald Trump, but you need an establishment oriented candidate that, like a governor, who could give some sense of uh, normalcy to how policy would work. If you think of even, like for somebody like Bill Clinton, the first two years of administration, completely ineffective. You saw the loss of, after 40 year, four decades um, and the return of power to Republicans in Congress. And then you had Leah Panetta come in and kind of and somebody who understood how Congress worked so you could start to have welfare reform, telecom reform, all the big things that were important. It really is imperative that the executive branch know how to work uh, with the legislative branch. And so with that, hopefully, uh, it, it's something that they're focusing on, they'll pick somebody who, who knows how to work with Congress. All right, so with the caveat that these are just names, right, and as, as Steve points out, you know, we don't know at this point. We know, not we know people who don't want to run with Donald Trump, right? Yes. I mean, we've heard people right. say uh, that they don't want to be his running mate, yes. so we can cross those folks yes. off the list. Yes, but um, this list, this does not include those folks. No, there's some people on this list who said, sure, I would be his right. running mate. People like Rick Perry, who was one of his harshest critics, who mm -hmm. said, Sure, sign me up if he wants. You know, if he needs me as a ringman, I'm happy to help in we any way whatsoever. I'd say we don't need to worry about Texas turning purple for a while. And I'd also like somebody who knew all the cabinets. I'm just saying. I'm not saying he's going to man, pick him. I'm, I'm just saying these are people who, and have, I'm a Texan, who have said so I'm I'd be saying. happy to join. Him, I'd, right? I'd love Rick Perry on the ticket because he ran a horrible campaign. Both times around. So From a strategic standpoint, you'd like it. Yeah. But, uh, but what about that first slate that we had up there? So I think uh, Ben Carson was among those. Chris Christie, right? Rick, Chris Christie is someone who got on board the Trump train 
early and in fact took a little bit of heat for that right is just sort of criticized like well he looks so opportunist and I can't you know this is what the critics said uh, mm. and yet there he sits uh, on this list but also he's serving as the transition team person right for Donald Trump right. um, so what do you think first of all of, of Chris Christie well, no one's going to work harder to try and be the vice president than Chris Christie. I mean, he, he wants a ticket out of Jersey so bad on my head spin. Do you blame him? Uh, no, I mean, it's like, you know, I don't want to be indicted and these people hate me. Why go back? Um, so, uh, so I think, you know, look, I mean, he, he, was, he was a good and hard and loyal supporter right after New Hampshire. Uh, and unlike a lot of these other guys who sort of stuck around and made things difficult for Trump, he jumped right on board. So obviously he fits the bill that Trump himself is saying that he wants, which is someone with governance skills, uh, both as a prosecutor in Washington and as a governor. So he's, he's certainly qualified to be vice president. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the list, I mean, it could be anybody, but mm -hmm. I think you're, the, the tone of the conversation is right, which is Trump needs someone unlike him mm -hmm. who can help him govern, and Hillary needs someone unlike her who can actually get Democrats excited.